if modern education is like a spiritual slaughterhouse, does the lack of modern education make people spiritually receptive? Uh, we could say maybe in the in the Indian in villages in India, people are pious and they take up to take they take up to Krishna consciousness quickly. But mm. it's not entirely true, because often the villagers they have their own local deities and local godmen and local forms of worship, and without education they may have some generic faith, but from that generic faith to a specific commitment, where they mm. they commit themselves to one spiritual path, it doesn't always happen that easily. Mm. So we could say education, if education was slaughter education slaughtering people, then Is it that the uneducated are say unslaughtered or spiritually vibrant? <laughs> I don't know whether that that is true. The uns the unslaughtered masses. <laughs> the unslaughtered. <laughs> like oh, there's God. the expression the unwashed masses. Yeah. Unwashed. Yeah, yeah, I know that's true. <laughs> it's used in what sense? Unwashed masses. I just. Uh, yeah, it's I I don't know the origin of that. It's some British. thing but uh, yeah. sort of the the masses you know the unwashed the 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 uncultured uh the uncultured people they're called the unwashed masses yeah the, the uneducated <laughs> informal culture they're contrasted with the hoi polloi is that how it's pronounced the hoi polloi <laughs> hoi polloi yeah hoi polloi okay. <laughs> yeah and even if we say that would apply in india it would apply only in india isn't it if say we had to go to the villages in russia or villages in america and assuming i don't know it's a fair equalization but assuming that in villages people are educated would that make them more spiritually receptive just because they are educated in some where there is no no vedic culture i don't think that they would have anything to do with uh krishna consciousness so much not anything to do but so it it does seem that well, the they they the dancing singing they might like and in the yeah i was going to say they may immediately i mean not in american villages but in yeah you know african villages um you know yeah why not hari krishna and we i think indrajit maharaj had that book drums along the amazon where he talks about yeah. his the receptivity of the uh, people along the amazon yeah. coasts yeah So, so that kind of that there there may be a certain level of receptivity, and uh, we may even want to say it's it's the most important in terms of having an initial st- a start, a certain simplicity of openness, uh, which could lead then to a deeper commitment, but probably would not. I think, as you're saying. without considerable um considerable education i mean we 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 put a lot of emphasis in our society on reading shila prabhupad's books right mm. although prabhupad also sometimes says if you can't read that's okay just chant hari krishna uh <laughs> or if, but for the most part it seems like our our tradition is very much rooted in a presupposition of considerable education chaitanya charitamrita was written as a product of uh, the culture of the six goswamis in vrindavan hmm. with the sense that there's a need uh for the teachings of the six goswamis to be um to be brought to be transported um to bengal because in bengal there were so many different ideas of who is lord chaitanya and what his teachings were about mm. uh and so for that reason mainly Krishna Das Kaviraj was commissioned to write Chaitanya Charitamrita in Bengali of course with many many quotes in Sanskrit but then he generally gives a, a Bengali translation or purport to the Sanskrit um but then in Bengal at that time people would have been hearing Chaitanya Charitamrita 
They wouldn't be yes. reading. The only only a few people would be reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. But also, this points to another thing that we're talking about modern times, indeed, when we're talking about modern education. And I was just reading that uh, in um, first, uh, that the vast majority of people would have been illiterate, including, you know, wealthy people, uh, people of considerable public influence and so on. Akbar was illiterate, <laughs> if we want to go oh, to India. Really? Yeah, he was, he was illiterate. He saw no need. Why should he learn to read? There was no need. He could have his, uh, his scribes uh, read aloud to him and write and so on. My God, eh? it's difficult to imagine in today's world. A person going to any place of influence without being able to be literate. Yeah, and he was the emperor. 